as we go through a developmental process. <clears throat> so imagine if you are a mother, if you are a parent, if you're a grandmother, or when you were a child, see if this isn't true. At four years of age, the child says, my mommy can do anything. At eight years of age, my mom knows a lot, a whole lot. Twelve years of age, well, my mom doesn't really know everything. <laughs> Fourteen years of age, well, naturally, mother doesn't know that either. Sixteen years of age, mother, she's hopelessly old-fashioned, she doesn't know a thing. Eighteen years of age, that old woman, she's out of date, and still hasn't learned anything. Twenty-five years of age, well, she might know a little bit. Thirty-five years of age, before we decide, let's get mom's opinion. <laughs> Forty-five years of age, I wonder what mom would think about this. And 65 years of age, wish I could talk it over with mom. Now, Debbie and her son talked a lot about <coughs> women. I'm going to tell you a little bit about some mama's boys. <laughs> James was a very devoted son. His relationship with his mother was very close and it lasted a lifetime. What impressed James the most was his mother's un. un ceasing confidence in him, the kind of blind confidence that only a mother can express and mean. Even on his deathbed, James' agony could only be overcome by writing a letter to his mother. Now, Ted was eternally seven. <laughs> Throughout his lifetime, his friends warned those about to meet him that Ted was only seven years old. Why? Well, Ted was a mama's boy. Letter to his mother began, Darling, beloved little mother of me. He truly was a mother's boy. She had a compulsion for cleanliness, and so did he. So Ted and his mother were one and the same. Now for Bill, Bill's mother put it this way, I find that Willie needs constant watching and correcting. It requires great caution and firmness, but I do not believe we can love our children too much. Well, you can imagine how Bill turned out. <laughs> now Woody was an unashamed mama's boy, physically and emotionally, clinging to his mother virtually into adulthood. There was only warmth between the two, and Woody recalled that he came to love the best in womanhood through his mother's apron strength. Frank wouldn't dare go to school without his mother, and the school was Harvard University. <laughs> Frank's mother had an extraordinary drive for perfection, and she focused it all on Frank. For six decades, she tried to organize her son's life in minute detail, and Frank loved every minute of it. Now, Harry's mother, mother and Harry quite a bit, she sat up with him countless times when he needed her. So then he wondered that Harry returned the favor continually throughout his life. Harry's mother lived to be 94, and right up to the last, there was Harry, conducting business matters from his mother's bedside. And David, when David was a big boy in the army, he never stopped writing his mother. In fact, he once swiped a top secret directive in, or, in order to send a Mother's Day card. All through David's life, he subconsciously imitated Mama, her laugh and her expression. And John was also an imitator of his mother, always following her lead in everything that he did. Now these were all mama's boys, and in times of crisis, it was always mother who came to mind. So who were they? James Garfield, Teddy Roosevelt, William Howard Taft, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, Mary S. Truman, Dwight David Eisenhower, and John Fitzgerald Kennedy. Being mama's boy is not so bad. <laughs> so, Today we begin week two of our four-week prosperity series, and we study chapter two in Catherine Ponder's book, Dare to Prosper. What, what Ponder is calling us to do is, in this chapter, is dwell on divine substance. Dwell on divine substance. Do not focus on conditions. The conditions are out here, but rather know that divine substance is as though God is, all, is our source for all things. She calls it substance divine substance. 
And she says, this is one of the most powerful affirmations among the many that are in the book. Divine substance is the one and only reality. If you know that and believe that, you will, you will have incredible prosperity in your life. In fact, in this chapter, she talks about how people embrace that affirmation and have wonderful stories to share about it. Charles Fillmore, the founder of Unity, one of the founders of Unity, said the inexhaustible mind substance is available at all times and in all places to those who have learned to access it and lay hold to it in consciousness. It responds to your faith in it and your demands upon it. Divine substance. Your faith in it and your demands upon it. So you take care of your you know, take control of your world by your beliefs, by your attitudes, by your thoughts, by your whole presence of being, if they are thoughts about substance. Now, we can put in a lot of different words for substance. It can be source, it can be God, it can be universal consciousness, it can be the creator, it can be whatever word you want. But realize that it is divine substance from which all things are created the divine creator. Substance in Ponder's word, as she uses it, which also refers to perhaps the law of cause and effect, the power that's available for us to use in creation. You might even think of it as the quantum field from which all emanates. So we have to declare divine substance is the only reality in my financial affairs. If you can do that, Divine substance is the only reality in my financial affairs. It is like saying, God is my source. Right? It's not coming from out of there. It is all coming from divine substance. Now, to really embrace this truth, you have to think about what you desire to be yours. We talked about this last week. In other words, being clear about what you want. Now, <clears throat> Daily meditation, according to Charles Fillmore, means you go into the silence daily at a stated time and concentrate on the substance of spirit. If you were to go into meditation daily and truly focus on the substance of spirit, knowing that God is the source of all things, and he says, spend an hour a day molding in definite detail what your thoughts are about what you desire. In other words, visualize it, see it, experience it, feel it. Well, this is nothing new, right? We've talked about this a lot. An hour a day. Oh my God. An hour a day, that's hard work. I don't have an hour a day. I'm too busy. I don't have the time. I'll do the affirmations, but I can't spend an hour a day. Really an hour a day? We so often do not want to do the work. And I want to tell you today about what I refer to as spiritual bypass. It's like you are here at this point, and you want to traverse, and you want to get to this point. So you're, you have a certain level of prosperity, but you want greater prosperity in maybe other aspects of your life or in all aspects of your life. So you want to move from here to here. Well, okay, let's just do the affirmations <coughs> and see what happens, okay? Instead of moving through and doing the work. We want to bypass, we call it the spiritual bypass. I don't want to do the work, but I want everything to change. And I don't want to change anything, I'll look everything the way it is, but I want to be more <coughs> prosperous. So let me continue doing everything the way I've been doing it, because it really is comfortable and it's really familiar, and this is the way I've always done it. So let me continue to do that, and yet I also want greater prosperity. So let me go from here to here. And because I'm a unity person, and because I, I know all this stuff, I understand it, I'm going to get there. tell you right now, you're going to be disappointed until you begin to embrace it, until you really and truly do the work. Now, what do we mean by doing the work? 
Well, we'll talk about that. But I told you last week about Emma Curtis Hopkins. She was the teacher of teachers. She's the one who taught the Fillmores and, and taught all the New Thought um, founders of all the great churches. Ernest Holmes, Religious Science, the Brooks Sisters, Divine Science. She was the teacher of teachers. And she would not teach you unless you were doing the work. So if you came to her and said, you know, I'm having trouble with prosperity, so I can't quite afford to take your class, it's awfully expensive. Be gone with you, go out there and get your prosperity conscious in order, and then you can come and take my class. Go do your work. Go do your work and understand what's going on with your prosperity. Begin to really embrace it. Are you doing your meditations? Are you doing those things that will move you forward in prosperity? Until you are, I'm not gonna teach you anything. You wanna do boom, ba boom. You wanna jump over and do spiritual bypass. How often do we wanna do that? I want it to be easy. I hear so often, well, it's not easy. It's not meant to be. Oh crap. <laughs> Sometimes the most Wonderful things are things that we work through and struggle through and do in a certain way that, em that em embellishes our consciousness and moves us into a greater sense of being and understanding. Beware the spiritual bypass. I just recently was <clears throat> listening to a CD about Joe Dispenza. He's one of my favorite authors. Um, he's got a new book out now that you are the placebo. But I was talking, you know, I was listening to this tape and whatever, and he says, you know, I get people who come to me all the time and they say, you know, my life is just falling apart. I really need help. And he says he gets really tired of dealing with people like that because what he says is I turn right around and say, why well, are you doing the work? Well, no. Do the work. Do the work. Meditate an hour a day. Joe Dispenza would say. An hour a day. Okay, that's what Charles Fillmore says. An hour a day. That's what Catherine Ponder says. An hour a day. Really focusing on your prosperity. Focusing on your consciousness. Moving yourself into that place of really knowing you are one with source. Are you willing to do that? It's an interesting thing. Are you willing to invest one hour a day into your spiritual prosperity. Invest. Invest in your spiritual prosperity. We think about investments, that's truly what it is. You invest your time in your, in your prosperity and all the things that you desire. Investment is very, very important. In fact, one of the laws of prosperity is to invest in your prosperity, give that which you want to receive. Well, I mean, I hear this all the time. Well, if I don't have it, how can I give it? You'd be amazed. You can do what Mike was talking about today, and that is use your imagination. There's a lot of ways in which you can give that which you, which you want to receive. i tell you the true story. <clears throat> there was a young couple, and they really wanted to start a family, but first they wanted to have a house. They couldn't afford a house. You know, they were both working, and they could, you know, they could, you know, just, they kept up with their, their apartment and all their other expenses, but they really wanted a house. Well, of course, you need a down payment for a house, and they couldn't afford the house. So they said, well, we know, you know, that God is our source. And so we're going to find a way to give that which we want to receive. Well, there was in their community a big project going on because there had been <clears throat> another family whose house had burned down. And it was... Um, you know, two parents, and uh, I think it was four or five kids. And so the whole community was getting together to help rebuild their home. They said, oh, we want to participate in that. So they said they'd give their time to help rebuild the home for someone else. So they donated all their extra time to building this home, as did a whole lot of other people. And while they were doing that and, and giving of their time, giving of their energy and their blessing for someone else's home, they met lots of interesting people. In fact, they met one other couple who was fairly wealthy in town, and they really connected, and they, the other couple said to them, you know, we're about to go on a trip to Europe for about a year, and we would love to have someone house sit for us. Would you be interested? 
So they gave up their apartment and they moved into this fabulous home that they lived in for a year. And during that year, they saved all the money that would have gone to an apartment. And they used that money to put a down payment on a house and buy a house. It's a true story. Amazing, isn't it? When you give that which you want to receive, it will come back to you. That's the law of prosperity. I mean, it's the law of giving and receiving. It's the law that we recite every Sunday when we pass our love offering basket, that as we give, so shall we receive. So if you want to be prosperous in any way, whatever it is, if you want more love in your life, give love. Whatever it is you desire, think of ways in which you can give it so that you can move into circulation. Now, how else can you work through this period that you want to get from point A to point B? What else is the work? Last week we talked about that, doing the work. First of all, create the vacuum. How many of you cleaned out your closets? How many of you have been paying attention to what your thoughts are, the way you've been thinking? Do you put any time into that during the day? Do you come to an awareness of that, pay attention to it? We also talked about <clears throat> declaring what it is you want, writing out your goals. How many of you have actually written out your goals? We've talked about this so many times, so many ways. Are you doing the work? Are you getting clear about what you want? And now, you know, we also talked about doing visualization and affirmations. I know many of you bought that book. Well, I hope you are taking those affirmations and using them and working with them and bringing them into your now assignment, which is meditation. We love to think about all we have to do is come together and celebrate. And this is true. We can. We come together and we celebrate if you really want to move deeper into your prosperity, if you really want to feel the power of divine substance moving through you, do the work. Do not do the spiritual bypass. If you do the spiritual bypass, you might feel good, you might feel okay, but you won't change anything. And that's the hardest thing for us to sometimes realize, doing the work is really important. Now, you can do it. Um, and I'm going to invite you every Sunday morning, we, we get together and do meditation from 9 to 9.30. Sometimes we do visualization for our center, we can do visualization for yourself. And every Tuesday morning at 11 o'clock, there is a prayer chaplain here who is holding a meditation. So if you can find time to at least move into those, give up your time. Remember, this is an investment in you an investment in your prosperity. The investment, remember when we invest in something, if you're going to invest in a CD, if you're going to invest your money in something, invest your time in something, you expect something in return. And that's, that's the, the principle of law and effect. That quote. Are you investing in you, in your prosperity? What are you doing? <laughs> Give that which you want to receive. It's one of the most important spiritual principles that we can do. That's why the plan giving program that Sandy talked about today is so important. Because the plan giving program gives you power over your investment. I'm, I am creating a continual flow of giving. So often when we think about a plan giving program, we think, well, it only benefits the church. You know, or the center. Yes, it does. But it really benefits you on a consistent and regular basis. I am giving to where I am spiritually fed. I am moving into that circulation. And you just find things begin to flow in your life in the most powerful and wonderful ways. So you can say, I am prosperous. I'm in circulation. I'm able to give so that I might receive. I trust in God being the source of all things, and I trust in the flow, knowing that as I give, so shall I receive. 
So whatever you desire, if you desire a better relationship with someone, how can you give that? How can you create a better relationship? You know, it's always using your imagination. How can I invest in me and invest my time, invest my being to really move into a greater state of, of prosperity? Divine substance is the one and only reality. If you took that into your meditation and really began to work with that and understand that, you begin to dissolve all the conditions in your life that you no longer choose to have. Divine substance is the one true reality. So invest in that. And you will reap rewards beyond what you could possibly imagine. From here to here to here. If you are willing. Blessed with the substance. <laughs> <laughs> and so it is.